place your index finger of the non-dominating hand in the mucobacal fold. Here, this is a mandible. We will try to uh, show what you have to feel in the pole. While I will proceed with me here, I will feel the external oblique ridge. This is the external oblique ridge. Here, I felt it. Then, my finger, I, I have to not notice that. My finger, in my index finger, is placed so that my fingernail is facing upwards and parallel to the cruiser plane. Not like this, not like this, not like this. It will be so difficult if you uh, proceed in another way, especially if you have no experience. Now, while I'm proceeding, I'm proceeding posteriorly, I will move the, the beginning of the external breakage. At this point, I will trace it posteriorly and superiorly. I find myself uh, going upward. At this point, I will feel the external breakage under midpoint of my finger bed here. here. Now, I'm feeling, I'm feeling it by the midpoint, the mid area or the midline or the mid portion of my finger. While I'm going posteriorly, I have to move my finger medially like this. Don't allow the external oblique ridge to deviate you laterally. Don't keep the external oblique ridge under the middle of your finger. You, you have to try to feel it by the most lateral area of your fingernail, here. Here, uh, in the patient mouth, there will be mucosa, there will be saliva, it will be more or less slippery, so that while you are tracing, you will be directed lateral. If you are, have been directed lateral, such like this, you will reach here the most concave area, but you will feel it by the most by the most medial area of your finger bed here, like this. When you turn your finger, you will only feel the external oblique ridge, and you will be so lateral away from the right area, as we will see. Now, the right technique is while I am proceeding to trace the external oblique ridge with my fingernail, I will make this motion like this. I have to. Try to feel it only by the most lateral area of my finger bed, like this. Until, until I found the most concave area here. Only this, at this point, I have to turn my finger so that my fingernail will face medially. What I'm feeling here? Here I'm feeling, feeling the external oblique ridge and the internal oblique ridge. Both of, the, both of them at my finger bed. If you felt only one ridge, you are wrong. You have to be in the right position here. This is the most lateral area of my finger pad. Feeling the external breakage. Here is the most concave area. This concave area here. Here I have to turn my finger in medially. I will feel, feel the internal breakage, the external breakage. The trigomandibular lafe should be like this here. The point. Until, until, until this point, it's, it will be, should be horizontal, here it will be, should be vertical. I have to advance my syringe from the contralateral side. The barrel should be, should lie over the contralateral B molars. While I am advancing, I have to take support and advance my needle. The line, that line, where here the second point, the fail, courses vertically after have been horizontal. The, that line should be divided into medial one third and lateral two thirds, or medial one quarter and lateral three quarters according to the length. Here I have to advance my knee like this. Okay. This is where, where is the needle should lie. This needle should be just over the lingula, just over at the lingula here, at like this. This is the lingula. The, 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 the needle should lie here, like this. Should touch the bone here. Okay. Here would be the needle area or the point of needle insertion or on the mucosa. 
Here is the midpoint of my fingernail. This is the point of insertion. Here is where the refee courses vertically after being medium. Of course, like this. It should lie here to deposit the solution. Just over the, the lingula, where here the concavity at this fossa, the nerve will enter its canal. The nerve will enter here to course in the ball, within the ball. Place your index finger of the non dominating hand in the mucopacal fold opposing to the lower premolars, with your fingernail facing upwards and is parallel to the occlusal plane. Move your finger posteriorly till you feel the external oblique ridge. Then trace it posteriorly and superiorly until you reach the most concave area, which is the coronoid nooch. To make sure that you are in the most concave area, try to trace bone more superiorly. Then you, you will feel convexed. When you feel convexity, this means you are out of the coronoid nooch or beginning to be out of the coronoid nooch. Thus, uh, go back to the previous position of the most concave area. Only at this point turn your finger so that your fingernail faces medially. Retract the tissues and fix your finger. The midpoint on your fingernail is the first of two reference points. The second point is a point on the, uh, on the pterygomandibular refe where it changes its course from horizontal to vertical. Here is the pterygomandibular refe and up to this point it courses horizontally and then it courses vertical, as you see. The line that connects these two points on your fingernail and on the refe should be divided into medial one-third and lateral two-thirds or medial one-quarter and lateral three-quarters. This is the point of needle insertion. Direct your syringe from the, con the contralateral side passing over the con contralateral premolars to penetrate the tissues at the point of insertion. Advance your needle through the tissues slowly till you gently touch the bone which lies on the medial surface of the ramus. You can withdraw the needle for 1 mm. Aspirate and slowly deposit about 1.5 mm of the solution over about 1 to 2 minutes. The, ling the lingual nerve should be readily uh, analyzed by the technique. However, a lingual nerve block could be carried out separately by applying the same technique but after touching the bone, you have to withdraw the needle for about 5 mm. Aspirate and deposit about 1.5 to 3 mm of the solution at the same rate mentioned earlier. At the end, slowly withdraw the needle out of the tissues. By this, the, uh, the inferior alveolar nerve block has been performed. Left side, I place my finger, index finger vertically and proceed posteriorly until I feel the external oblique ridge here. Then I trace it posteriorly and superiorly as it goes posteriorly and superiorly. At this point, I'll find that the, the external oblique ridge tries to move my finger and displace my finger laterally. By this, I will have a wrong landmark. So, you should feel the external oblique ridge with the most lateral area of your finger of your index finger here and continue tracing it also your finger should be medially while the external oblique ridge on the most lateral area of your finger here i feel it here and the rest of my finger is medial until i find the most concave area Okay, here we rotate my finger. So the first point is the midpoint on my fingernail. 
The second point is where the rafe traces vertically after being horizontally here. And this is a line. Bisect it into one medial third and two lateral two thirds. And here to inject. Here is the point of needle insertion. ايه المستكس اللي تكون المستكس اللي ممكن تحصل اثناء الانفيريور ايفر نيرف كلوك اول حاجه ممكن يحصل ال تاتش لايك ذيس هير اور هير ذا رايت اريا اوف نيدل انسيرشن از وي سيد ات وود بي هير تاتشينج اني اريا هير ات وود بي ترو ال ذا اف ذير از ا بريماتور كونتاكت ذير وود بي نو لوكال انستيجا اتشيفد سو اي هاف تو ويذرو ذا نيدل ريدايركت ات ان ذا رايت بوزيشن لايك ذيس اند We advance it. So here I, here I had an early bone contact, early touch, premature contact. So I will draw the needle, rotate. While here I'm rotating, I will be more or less over the canine or the incisors, like this, and we advance for the feet bone contact. If there is no bone contact like this to medial, if the if I. In the in the two medial injection, like this, they have no point contact or too deep penetration, like this here. If too deep penetration or no point contact, so I have to withdraw the needle, redirect the needle like this, passing over more or less the molars and redirect the needle like this. Now I have no point contact. I withdraw, redirect. And three is it. Here I am over the motors, more or less over the motors. What happens if I had no bone contact and I injected solution? Here I'm injecting in into the parotid gland. In the parotid gland, first I will have no local anesthetic uh, action achieved. Second point, uh, I will inject within the parotid gland, which way, which may uh, cause facial nerve paralysis. Well, of course, it's temporary. What happens if I inject too high? Or too low. If I'm injecting too high, like here, I may or may not have a local anesthetic action. Second point, I may inject into the pterygoid venous plexus, which are right here, which here. I may inject into the lateral pterygoid muscle, which you may, which you should be here in this situation. And injecting into the, the pterygoid venous plexus. Uh, may, may cause uh, systemic complications. Injecting into the ter uh, lateral thyroid muscle may, may uh, cause trismus. If I'm injecting too low, like this. All that is too low injections, all this. Okay, here is the medial thyroid muscle. First, I will have no anest local anesthetic action uh, achieved. Second, I will cause trismus due to muscle in injection. If I had very high or very low injection, I have to withdraw the needle and re-proceed from the beginning with the technique to have the landmarks here, landmarks here until I found uh, the, the right area to insert the needle. The most common mistakes, first one is the operator can turn his finger before reaching the most concave area, here or here, so he will lose the landmark. The second one, usually the external peak ridge tends to deviate your finger laterally, sliding it laterally. So you have to keep your finger medially and trace external peak ridge by the most lateral area of your finger. This is where the most serious mistake could happen. The most serious, serious mistake that could make you lose your landmark is here. While you are proceeding procedurally, you have to move your finger medially, like this. This motion is the most important motion. Uh, another mistake is if you don't place your finger so that the fingernail faces upwards and parallel to the close plane like this or this, and try to trace the external oblique ridge, you may find it difficult to trace it and uh, you may easily lose the landmark. Another mistake is to proceed to, uh, for the injection. While the patient is not tilting his head towards the operator like this or this, you have to gently tilt the patient head to face you. 
the non compactable nerve, you have to transfer your syringe parallel to the occlusal plane and at the level of the free gingiva, which should be here, until you touch on. Gently, then withdraw a few drops, about uh, one to three to, uh, or millimeters of the solution. Here you will be distal and buckle to the last molar. So that is, I think I advance, take my syringe, like this in the end of your buckle hole, parallel to the cruiser plane and at the level of the free gingiva, which should be here. Until I feel touching bone, deposit solution slowly, and then you can remove it.